Hello, Dr. Fensale. How are you today? I'm good. So what are we going to be talking about today? Okay, so I'm starting off with the more serious videos, okay? And today I'll be giving just the very basic definitions around HIV. As you know, um, HIV is my passion. I'm an HIV clinician and that's what I spend most of my time um, I'm doing. So I'll be giving definitions around HIV and we'll take it from there. Cool. First question, what is HIV? HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Human, it affects human beings. Immunodeficiency, it affects your immune system and makes it weaker. Virus, it's a virus. Cool. The next question is, what is AIDS? AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Acquired, you were infected. Immunodeficiency, again, your immune system is made weaker. And then syndrome is like a collection of diseases. All right. The third question is, what is a CD4 cell? So a CD4 cell is part of a group of cells that are in your immune system. The CD4 cell is what we call the soldiers in your, in your immune system, and they basically protect your body from diseases. All right. All right. And a viral load, what is a viral load? So viral load is the amount of HIV in your system, in your blood. So how does that work if there's a lot of, how, how do they count it? How does that work if there's a viral load? Okay, so basically the relationship between um, HIV and the CD4 count and the viral load works like this. HIV infects your CD4 cells. It uses those cells to make copies of itself. Those copies are what we call the viral load. So after the HIV has used the CD4 cell to make copies, the CD4 cell dies. And normally, a person has got between 500 and 2,000 CD4 cells in their, in their system. So, so what you're saying is that the longer the AIDS remain or HIV remains in your blood system, the higher the viral load. Is that what you're basically saying? Well, it depends on how sick you are. So for some people who get infected with HIV, they don't get sick um, um, you know, very quickly. They can spend like 20 years with a low viral load and a high CD4 count. But there are some people who, after infection, within two years, have progressed to the AIDS stage. So HIV and AIDS are linked in the fact that HIV causes AIDS. So you can't get to the AIDS stage of illness if you're not HIV positive. So the myth about it taking 10 years to kill you, is that real or false? It's true. It, it depends on the person. So there are some people who will progress quickly, as I said, and there are some people who can, who can take long to progress. But yeah. It okay. could be that long. Last question. When does HIV become AIDS? HIV becomes AIDS when you are in what we call stage 4 of HIV disease. So stage 4 is when your CD4 count is less than 100, but we don't even count CD4 count anymore. We look at the diseases that you have. Okay. So cryptococcal meningitis, um, extrapulmonary TB, TB which is outside of the lungs, um, esophageal candida, that's like oral thrush that goes all the way down your 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 um, esophagus there's a few there's a few diseases that once you have one of those diseases we qualify you as having aids the nice thing though is that if you're to start treatment and um, and improve you can go back to stage one which is the first stage of hiv oh thank you everyone for watching my video <laughs> there'll be more coming in the next few weeks please subscribe